to right, Russell Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me get a hell yeah. Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of Party on Broad. Our Sixers draft continues, and we coverage continues, and we are talking about another bucket getter, possibly in that second round range. He is Austin Reeves. A uh, ton of fun to watch tape. Where does he project in the NBA? We're going to talk about it. And to help me do that is my man, Tiago. He is at T-Scabby on Twitter. What's up, Tiago? What's going on, Chris? I got a nickname for Austin Reeves. I, I know I'm going to crush for it. I'm going to say it anyways. I call him the redneck Luka Doncic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the entire, time I'm, the entire time I'm watching Austin Reeves, I'm like, Austin Reeves is here. Austin Crowell is like here. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now he goes to shooting though. That kid can shoot, man. Got that look at Donkic, like dribble, just maneuvers through the whole defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, Donkic, man. Sorry, sorry, Sixers fan. He's not him. <laughs> All right, guys. Today we're talking about his strengths, weaknesses, and fit with the Philadelphia 76ers. Before we get started, if you love the Sixers, if you love the NBA draft, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications. We're gonna break it down. Let's start the tape. Tiago, tell me about Austin Reeves. Yeah, Austin Reeves um, transferred out of Wichita State. So did two years out of Wichita State. Played behind a guy who Sixers fans are very know, know very well, Landry Shamit. Uh, when Landry went out to the NBA, had another year with Wichita State and then transferred out of Oklahoma. Uh, two different players, man. The player at Wichita State, entirely different than the player at Oklahoma. Uh, shot something like 45% from three at Wichita State. Actually broke the school's record um, in three-pointers in a half with seven. Uh, at Oklahoma, however, he shot only 27% from three. Yeah. So his efficiency really just plummeted at Oklahoma. But that is not to say he's a bad shooter. We can talk about why I think he's, uh, he's going to be a better shooter than people think he is. But, you know, the Sixers brought him in. I think they brought him in because of a few reasons. I think that he tested better than he looked on tape at the combine. So some of these athleticism numbers, not so much the vertical, but the agility stuff came out much better than it actually looked on tape. So they kind of probably wanted to check him out a little bit more because he looks very deliberate uh, in space. Uh, but the, like I said, the numbers came out pretty well and had really good scrimmages. I remember I was watching one of the games, um, one of the scrimmages, and – I did not know much about him, but I'm watching this game. I'm like, who's this guy? He's making all the plays in the pick and roll, getting people involved. You know, not jacking up shots like a lot. Of these, a lot of these scrimmages, people are just coming down the court and just kind of jacking up these wild shots. He wasn't doing any of that. He was actually orchestrating the offense the way it's supposed to be run. So it was very impressive. You see it right there. He make that kind of that, that sweet pass to, to the baseline cut. So I think the combine did him very well, and I think he, he probably went from an undrafted type player to now being uh, entrenched in that second round conversation. And, you know, he fits a little bit what the Sixers want, a uh, bigger guard. Uh, Sixers love big guards. So he definitely one of those guys. So yeah, a lot, a lot of interesting things with him. Definitely a second round player though. We're not talking about a first round player here. Unless the Sixers see something that nobody saw. So it'd be interesting to say. Uh, we have Bubba Wallace guy saying he's 23. I think he's 22. He'd be 23. Yeah. Uh, not much of a chance. Yeah, guys, we're talking about a second round prospect here. Uh, let's talk about strengths. Clearly, you have to, it begins and ends with his pick and roll offense, right? Like that was what we saw in Oklahoma. Uh, he's got a lot of craftiness around the rim. Uh, he's got the pull up, as you see right there, even though his percentages weren't that great. Um, this is a guy that can score in a multitude of ways. Uh, he has a lot of weapons uh, in his arsenal. Um, so that's the question is uh, the six, you look at the Sixers and their pick and roll offense. This guy is a clear fit, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the question is, will he be able to get a shot off and the NBA level? Uh, Tiago, what do, what's your thoughts on this guy uh, in terms of strengths? Yeah, I mean, he, really his swing skill is going to be the shot. If he's a 27% shooter at the NBA, he's not an NBA player. I mean, there, we can talk about anything. Anything, anything else he does, if he's shooting 27% from deep, he's just not going to be an NBA player. So um, that's really going to be swing skill. Now, we talked about him being a 40 some percent shooter at Wichita and that dropping down to 27% at Oklahoma. That came with usage. So his usage at Oklahoma 
went way up. At, at Wichita State, it was something around like a 60% usage. At Oklahoma, he was the main guy. And you see how he shot his three-pointers at Oklahoma. It's a lot of on-the-ball stuff, off-balance, contested. Uh, he was really trying to beat that guy. I mean, he had 27 points against Gonzaga, just to give you an idea of the type of expectations they had around them to score. Uh, he was not that player at Wichita State, so he's got to be able to accept more of an off-the-ball role, which he will. He's not a guy who's going to come in and be like, I'm the point guard of this offense, even though he does play with pretty cool confidence and swagger. Uh, he's just not going to be like that in the NBA. So – if he can accept that off the ball role and really rely on open looks, which he's going to get at the NBA at a very high number, a very high volume, uh, I am much more bullish on the shot than the 27% that we saw which does State. Uh, if he's going to come in and try to pull up and take guys off the dribble and, and do it that way, uh, I don't see him making the NBA because it, everything just looks very deliberate and, and very slow with him as a ball handler. I mean, maybe, you know, under different – System or something, I don't know. But I, just, I don't see that at the NBA level for him. Now, this not to say that he cannot add some value on the ball because he's a super savvy player, Chris. I mean, you said it. I mean, his ability to kind of, you know, his craftiness around the rim, you know, like he does up and under, hit some wildly acrobatic shots. Team player, very crafty. It's unselfish. So he's going to find cutters. He's going to find open guys. He's definitely a very smart ball handler. So – this is not to say that he cannot add some value as a complimentary guy, but as a scorer, he's simply not going to survive at the NBA if his idea of doing so is in the is in the pull up game. I don't think it's going to happen for him. So we'll see. I am very bullish that he can do and shoot very well as a floor spacer. So when we start talking about weaknesses, it's very clear that the, he's not going to be facilitating an NBA offense. Everyone's watching this. Um, that's not going to happen. Although he, he's got like, you see that between the legs and, and the cross. Yeah. That's impressive. That like, that's, that's an um, borderline NBA move right there. Right. Um, it's but, crafty, but I mean, at the game, he's much faster, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that thing, it looks sweet, but it, it takes like 20 seconds to finish the move. <laughs> so the main question I think when it comes to Austin Reeves is what can he do off ball? Like how can he impact an NBA offense without the ball in his hands. Any take on that, Tiago, and, t and other weaknesses? Yeah, so, I mean, it's – again, we, we throw names out there. I'm not saying he's going to be that player, but it's kind of like what Denny Green's role is with the Sixers. It's really, you know, you go from baseline to baseline, you sit on the wing, uh, and you kind of wait for your turn to take the shot. I mean, that's really how he's going to contribute at the NBA level. I don't – although I will, say, I will say this. as He's a very strong player, and you can really see him finish through contact at the rim. So I do think he has some cutting qualities to his game. And I will think he's, he may be able to do that at the next level as well. But it's going to be mostly as a stationary floor spacer at the next level. And uh, and I do think, just add one more negative to his game, not to pile on Austin Reeves, but I do think it's going to be a really good value pick at the end of the second round. Uh, but, man, like, teams are going to put a bullseye on him and they're going to run him off screens. 100%. All the time. I mean, 100%. you think about like, you think about him on like a guy like JJ Redick, right? I mean, he's got no prayer, man. They're gonna yep. run off screens uh like crazy. And on top of that, I mean, you see him a lot, like guys cut off him and finish at the rim, and he's kind of he just can't keep up, man. So you gotta play with a rim protector for sure, or else you're just gonna beat points in the paint. And you're gonna be able to live with the fact that if he's out there for however long, man, they're just gonna put a bulls out on him, and he's gonna have to figure it out a way because the quickness just doesn't look on film to be there. But again, the combine numbers show a little bit better. So I think maybe there's an in-between there between a complete zero and a guy who can have some little bit of impact as a off-the-ball defender. All right, let's talk about fit with the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, this guy met, you know, is well scheduled a pre-draft workout for the Sixers. Uh, so there's a lot of interest, clearly. Uh, Tiago, how do you see uh, this dude fitting with the Sixers? Yeah, so we talked about the floor spacing element, which is pretty clear, assuming that his shot comes over. Um, Sixers, we talked about it. They want to be big. I mean, Doc Rivers said it. The Sixers want to defend big. This guy's six foot five. He's strong. I'm not saying he's going to be an impact defender. I don't think he's going to be an impact defender at all, but they want to have size on the court. And he's the guy who, you know, 
you talk about a lot of a lot of what teams are doing now. They're posting up guards, posting up players, and you know you have a tough time posting up on him because he's a very strong player. So you know you have these bigger as these ball handlers get bigger and bigger and bigger. They're posting up these smaller, smaller guards. For instance, like Ben Simmons, right? And you have a guy who's six to five. He's not going to be moved and bullied very easily. So I think uh, defensively, he's going to be okay. <laughs> I don't know if this is any TJ McConnell back. Maybe it's like a I have a <laughs> Love me some TJ McConnell. Che- a cheerleader or something like that. Although he did have a very good year last year. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a very good year last year. I'll give him he credit. did. He led the league in steals. I mean, if TJ McConnell is the needle mover, the Sixers have bigger problems than this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know 86 percentile in the pick and roll, right? So, again, I don't think he's going to be a high-level pick and roll player, but that speaks to the savviness, the IQ, the passing, the playmaking off the pick and roll. Uh, and that's what I think the Sixers – there's no question as to why the Sixers brought him in. I mean, they see that, and they see a guy who could potentially be a floor spacer at a, at a adequate level. Yeah, my, my take is there's definitely better uh, prospects that the Sixers should be looking at here in the second round. That doesn't mean I didn't enjoy my, my, my deep dive into uh, Austin Reeves. I, I, I'm rooting for him. I think he's going to be in the G League uh, for sure. Uh, next year and I think he's probably going to have a lot of success I think there's a there's a definitely a high percentage that he really thrives uh, in in at least the G League starting out but I just I think there's definitely a better uh, op better options for the Sixers here in the second round so not that I didn't not that I wouldn't like him on the Sixers maybe as an undrafted free agent or something along those lines but I don't think I I don't think it's going to be in my Second round big board for sure, but I'm rooting for the kid. I, I think he's, uh, you know, he, I, I think there are things there uh, that you know, with development, uh, with some time, uh, that could definitely be unlocked. But I don't, I don't know if that includes the Philadelphia 76ers and their current championship window. Any thoughts on that, Tiago? I mean, you could have the next Luka Doncic <laughs> second round. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, man, watch him. He reminds you. He's not Luka Doncic. But he, <laughs> around, he like fears himself out, and boom, hits you with a shot. He's got a Dude, if you're if you're not creating separation at college, like yeah, no, it's it's like you said. I mean, the G League will be a great place, right? Because the G League, if you don't stand out of the G League in some way, shape, or form, you're done, right? And we saw that with Zayer Smith. Like Zayer Smith could not stand out of the G League. You're done. There's no other path for you at the NBA level. So he's going to go to the G League if he's not making a name in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, Brogdon's an interesting kind of similar style for sure. I definitely see that. Cool. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think about that at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Brogdon, obviously, first round pick. He's not going to be that, but I definitely see that playing style. All right. So that is our scouting report on Austin Reeves. Guys, if you love the Sixers draft, please give this video a like. Uh, we're going to be pumping. Are we doing a mock draft on Thursday? Is that going down? Do it, man. I'm oh, down. man. Dude, months months, and months of collaborations going down into a Sixers NBA live mock draft. That's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, yeah. Tiago, where can we find you? What do you got going on, man? So we'll be doing a couple more of these before July 29th, which is you know, a week and a half from now. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Being fired, and and then we need like we need a we need a hiatus from because <laughs> 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 it has been nonstop since like the bubble, I'm, pretty much, man. Because it was like the bubble, the the draft, the season, now yeah. the draft again. Uh, and then yeah, we'll continue to do these, and then we're pushing out some articles of who the six should ch- target based on all the names that we've done so far, which is close to thirty, I think. It's going to be a ton of fun, guys. And we'll be doing live during the NBA draft, breaking down our takes, our grades, our analysis, instant analysis on everything Philadelphia 76ers and the draft. Uh, make sure you follow Tiago on Twitter at TScabby. Check out all of his uh, content there at thepainalliance.com. And if you're not following him on Twitter, like you're doing it wrong. You're yeah. clearly doing it wrong. I don't know what the heck you're doing. Follow him. You'll thank me later for Tiago. Yeah. I agree. You can go to Twitter and argue, or you can go to Twitter and you know discuss basketball. You make the decision. We, we go along the line of discussion, not yelling. So. I promise you, he's not just good looks. He brings it. 
he steps it up a notch when it comes to Sixers content. <laughs> for Tiago, for <laughs> stay awesome. Wow! Oh man, and being just posterized, Russell Westbrook. <laughs>